All right, what's up, everybody? Uh, CTP here. We're doing something a little different, something special this week. Um, I got, uh, and if you don't recognize me, that's because usually I'm behind the camera on Barbell Shrugged, so you don't normally get to see this pretty face and this awesome neck beard, but I got my special guest today, Julie Fouché. Um, today, or this past week on Barbell Shrugged, we interviewed um, New York Times bestselling author, author Tim Ferriss. Uh, if you don't know him, check him out. We got uh, the episode plus another episode of Barbell Business coming up tomorrow. Um, but Julie's also a big fan of Tim as well. So uh, we had been talking about her writing a post for the Daily. And uh, instead, I thought it'd be cool for Tim Ferriss Week, kind of on the Daily, it'd be cool to have Julie answer the questions that Tim asked each of his guests on his uh, podcast. That is the Tim Ferriss Show. He has a list of questions he always asks them towards the end. A little rapid fire session. I thought it'd be cool to bring Julie on and ask her those questions. So, without any fu further ado, Mrs. Fouché, awesome. <laughs> are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> All right, cool. So, who comes to mind when you hear the word successful? So, that's a hard one because I don't think of one person in particular. Um, but for me, I think of people who are able to you know, have success in the sense that you might think about it and be able to do something to change the world or help people, but who also have really good balance in their life. So people who who can have, um, you know, a family or are able to pursue other interests that they have too. So I think of, um, like, professors that I have in school who are able to do that really well, um, just other people that I know that they are able to balance multiple interests um, that to me is the most important thing for success. Yeah, and how do you how do you feel you handle that? Are you pretty good on that side of things? Yeah, I'm not the best. <laughs> so uh, it's a, always a work in progress. That's funny you say that because I feel like um, if I'm to be completely transparent, um, I feel like this show is almost the show and, and the business side of things has almost taken over my life recently, or I've I should rather say I've let it take over my life. And uh, I'm actually in the process of right now really trying to improve some of the relationships with family, friends that I've just kind of, mm -hmm. not on purpose, but kind of accidentally, um, you know, kind of let go by the wayside. So that's kind of cool that you say that. Um, I'm with you on yeah. that. So easy to get caught up in one thing. It is. It's exciting, but in the end it catches up to you. <laughs> right, yeah, I didn't want it to get any worse because especially with my family and my, and my closest friends, you know, yeah. If it gets any more out of control, that's not going to be good. So, all right. Well, uh, next question. I like this one a lot because we're we're big on self education and and um, always, uh, you know, all, or Zach Evanesh, our friend, always says, always be a white belt, uh, always be learning. So, what is the book or books you've most often gifted to other people? Um, I have to say a book called The Language of God. By Francis Collins. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's basically so. Francis Collins is a scientist. He right now he's the director of the National Institutes of Health, and he kind of set out to prove using science that God doesn't exist, and ended up coming to the opposite conclusion. Um, and so that was a book I read in college um, that had a big impact on me, and I have regifted it to a lot of different friends who are kind of going through the same question. Right. And um, that's interesting you say that. One of my, uh, I remember reading Neil deGrasse Tyson's, one of his books. Are you familiar with him? No. He's, uh, he did the, the, the remaking or the new edition of the show Cosmos. Okay. Um, he's he's uh, the director of the Hayden Planetarium. Anyway, really smart dude, astrophysicist, and, and uh, one, of, one of the things he says that kind of on that topic is, he says um, most of the world's, and I'm going to butcher this somehow, but he says most of the world's scientists, um, top scientists, don't believe in God. And he said, but that's not, to me, that's not the cool, interesting fact. He said, I think the percentage was like 95% don't believe in, in God. He said, but to me, the interesting fact is that there are 5% who do. Right. So out of, you know, so... I, and I'm kind of butchering that. You could go look up Neil on that quote, and I'm sure it'll pop up. But I, I always thought that was really cool that um, someone as smart as Neil was able to to see that and find that very interesting and uh, compelling. Yeah. Um, so uh, any other books before I skip over that one? 
Oh, I don't know. I've I've gifted a lot of paleo books to people too, just to, for people who are interested in learning about paleo or changing their diet. It's usually a good way to to educate. Yeah. Um, kind of a bonus question. I'll go ahead and skip to that that I had. Um, that kind of goes on that note, wanting to educate people about nutrition. I'm sure being I didn't even really introduce. I'm sure most of our audience knows who the heck you are. Um, you multi multi times CrossFit Games athlete. You you came in third this past year in 2014, um, and you will be competing again this year. Yep, this will be my last year. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> you sure about that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> okay, I'll ask you why here in a minute. So we'll we'll hold on to that, but. Back on to learning nutrition and exercise, I'm sure you more than anybody gets asked all the time because um, as well you're also you also in med school or did you finish med school now? Nope, I'm still in school. That's why this is my last year. <laughs> oh, okay, right on. Um, so you're in med school, uh, you're CrossFit Games, awesome, epic person, extreme, and uh, you kind of got your nutri nutrition handled. So... Um, you know, you're pretty much, uh, for lack of a better word, or I don't know, that's probably not the best way to say it, but you're, you're an expert. To most people in this world, you are probably an expert when it comes to those things. So, whether you consider yourself or not, um, and I feel like, um, you know, we get to hang out with the, some of the top people in um, all of strength and conditioning, and um, a common thing that we talk about or that I hear brought up is it's easy for someone um, who is an expert to want to overwhelm someone who's who's brand new into either their fitness journey or their nutrition journey or both. Mm -hmm. um, you kind of you know you have all the information and you almost want to even if you don't mean to you want to kind of impress them and and you tend to to try to tell them everything at once because you know so much. Right. Um, and have you seen this? Am I making any sense? Have you seen this in no. action before? Yeah, absolutely. It's it can be really overwhelming, especially for people who haven't been exposed before. So, you definitely and, want to start. Well. Yeah. So, so my question is: is as someone who who knows so much, um, who could, you know, tell tell someone new anything? What is kind of the one? Uh, and this kind of ties into our episode with Tim too. What is the one thing that you tell them that kind of sets off the chain reaction, so that you're not overwhelming them with? hey, you need to do this, and you need to do this. What's kind of that first domino in the chain, so to speak, that you can give them to knock over that in turn helps knock over all the other dominoes? Yeah, I think it's really person-dependent. So it all has to do with most of the things that have to do with, with people changing some behavior. And I think everyone is going to have something that's going to be easier for them or something that's going to be more realistic for them to start with. So I think it really depends on the person and what they, where they want to start and then just helping them start with that one thing and then from there branching out. Um, I think, like, thinking, like, nutrition-wise, I think the, the best advice you can give people is just to eat real food. Like, for people who are, who are not already doing that, just eat food that doesn't come from a package. That's the simplest thing and the, the easiest way for people to discern you know, it's not complicated. You don't have to look at food labels because if the food shouldn't have a label, it's real food. So right. that's the easy thing to start with. Yeah, I like that. I like that approach too, especially when you're first starting off. Because I know even when you get into paleo, you could recommend the paleo diet to to someone. And, and I guess at this point, the paleo diet means different things to different people. And I always hate when I meet someone who's brand brand new on it, and they're 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 really getting caught up in the minutia of the paleo diet like really focusing on like oh man I got I got uh, you know some beans or some legumes and I'm like right. hey man you're eating you're eating real food now yeah. like, you're doing good <laughs> so um, I'm with you on that all right mo moving along what is your favorite documentary and why um, actually going along the same theme it's a recent it just came out last year was fed up um, it's also about food about the food industry and a lot about the the messages that kids are getting these days and how we're having you know such problems with kids and obesity and just the environment that they're being brought up in um, and I, I really liked it I like the way that it compared sugar and and the food industry to the tobacco industry um, 
and I liked how it, it created, um, it gave people something actionable to do. So, you know, they put a lot of emphasis on sugar and just eliminating sugar from your diet. Um, mm -hmm. It's something that everyone can do. So I liked that about it, too. So, I mean, obviously you're, you know, med student and you're really into health and fitness. Um, like, what drives you to... To, to be in med school, like what's your what's your passion passion in that realm, and kind of what are you hoping to do after school? Yeah, so actually, when I first applied to med school, um, I never thought I wanted to have anything to do with primary care. I thought it would be too broad, and I just wanted to be a specialist who was really good at one thing and knew that particular part of the body or that particular set of diseases really well. Um, but that was also around the same time that I started doing CrossFit, and CrossFit has totally opened my mind to, you know, nutrition, fitness, life, all these lifestyle factors, and how big of it, you know, now as I'm in medical school, realizing how huge these things are in most of the diseases we're seeing today. So really, I shifted, and I do want to do primary care, um, probably through family medicine, and ultimately help to be able, help to make people healthier through their lifestyle, through helping people realize, you know, what's the right thing to do for them, and, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I remember, I, you know, this would have been about a year and a half ago, I texted you and asked you if, if you had seen our episode with uh, Dr. Jeremy Draper. We had done a, a he opened a, a, a CrossFit gym in Jackson, Tennessee, and he's since moved it to Memphis, Tennessee. It's called WellFit. And he merges um, like a doctor, like a practice, and a CrossFit gym. So literally, and if you go back, I think it's episode 33. Don't quote me on that, but just look up uh, Well Fit, Dr. Draper, yeah. Barbell Shrugged. It'll pop up. But um, yeah, I mean, is that something maybe you're interested in down the line, like where you can where you can literally walk from your doctor's office to the gym, like it's all one building? That's the goal. I think that that we need to, like the, right now for so many people, the CrossFit gym is kind of their, their social, it's their center of their social network, it's their, the place where they go to hang out, the people that they go to, um, you know, just to, to spend time with or to have fun, and I think that that type of a environment is where we need to be creating health, and our, our you know, medicine needs to be right involved in that. We don't need we don't need to have a separate place where you go and sit in a sterile environment with someone and they check over your lab numbers. But I think it should be very fluid between all these things that we're doing with our lifestyle, not just exercise, but nutrition and um, helping people have better sleep habits and decrease their stress and um, you know, the social connections are really important too. So I think all those things need to be linked together, and that's one of the the challenges that we have right now in medicine and why we're so focused on disease is because they are so separate. It's, it's sort of this thing that your doctor isn't really involved in. They just talk to you about it. Right. Yeah, that'd be super cool to see down the road more gyms kind of doing that model. And mm -hmm. obviously I have no idea what goes into actually being able to do that, but it was super cool to walk through his gym. And again, that's somewhere. Have you seen the episodes we've done by chance or are you familiar with Dr. Kirk Parsley, Sleep Doc? Uh, sleep doc? Former Navy no, Seal. I haven't. Yeah, he's uh, he's been on twice now, and he he really preaches, um, you know, getting better sleep, and it's easy to just say get better sleep. Um, and I think at at this point, a lot of people in the CrossFit community, Paleo community, know to to try to get better sleep, but it's one of those things that's easier pushed off. Right. And I think, um, and he makes the case that it's probably the one thing above exercise and above um, nutrition that you could, if you know, the easiest thing to really go fix from for for maximum benefit. Right. Um, so that brings me to this question uh, on the fly. How did you manage, um, how are you managing med school with training for the games, with just all life? How, how's your sleep? <laughs> right. So actually, my sleep is actually pretty good just because I do prioritize it. But um, yeah, your sleep I've been lucky. Or, or... Yeah, I've been really lucky. So the first year of med school, my sleep was not that great because I was a lot busier. Um, school was busy, training was busy, it was a full day and I didn't have much time for sleep. Um, that was in 2012 and then 2013 I actually took the year off from competing just because school was so demanding. Mm -hmm. And then last year 
uh, for the 2014 games and then this upcoming year, I've been able to sort of spread out my schedule. I'm doing uh, research. In my program, we all do a year of research, and I've sort of spread that out over two years. So it's given me a lot more flexibility to be able to get my training in and still get my work done and get enough sleep at night. So it's I'm enjoying it for a few more months while it lasts. Yeah, and do you, ha do, you do anything special for sleep? Do you do the blackout curtains, or do you do... Sleep mat. Do you any, do anything special, or you just kind of make sure that you get in your full eight hours? Or yeah, I luckily for me, I have no trouble falling asleep anywhere at any time. So me neither. I have had to implement a lot of those things, but I do try to sleep in a dark room and try to help myself relax a little bit before I go to bed, so I'm not like stressed out. Or I don't have a lot of thoughts going through my mind as I'm trying to fall asleep. Right. Yeah. The other guys on the show, they always have, or not always, but. I feel like the rest of them all have trouble going to sleep. And me, I can, like, I'll fall asleep while talking to you. My girlfriend hates it. She's always like, oh, my gosh, stay up. Um, but, you know, it's a perk. Unless the room is super hot. I can't do it if it's super hot. Oh, Sometimes you'll go to, like, a hotel, and it's like, man, they don't get any colder than this. Come on now. Yeah. All right, so let's see. What's the next? Oh, speaking of rituals, next question is, do you have any daily rituals? Mm, I... There's things that I would like to do every day that I tell myself I want to do every day, but it doesn't always happen. Um, probably, what sorry? What are those? Oh, you know, things like, things like the whole, you know, kind of winding down before you go to sleep, meditation. I do I do, do meditation, but it doesn't happen every day. Um, Definitely and, uh, if I can interrupt, what, what kind of meditation do you do, or like what, um, any anything in particular on that front that you're doing? Um, I just do, I just do like a basic kind of mindfulness practice and mm -hmm. use it to go into some visualization that helps me um, like get ready for competition and things like that. Cool. Yeah, I've been doing some. I've been I was kind of in the same boat where I was on and off doing it, forgetting to do it, don't want to do it. Uh, and yeah. recently, I've gotten really caught my stride and doing it all the time, and and it is really awesome. And, and uh, kind of like you said, more mindfulness. Um, yeah. I, during that time, I usually like to think of you know some things that I'm really grateful for, and mm -hmm. kind kind of prioritize my day. Um, but also just to kind of silence the mind a little bit and just to yeah. enjoy just just being. Um, cool. So so no rituals. We're, we're working on it. Maybe next time I see you, we'll, you'll be <laughs> well, driving like through. <laughs> well, kind of on that note, because um, meditation and mindfulness kind of goes with, uh, you know, your overall mentality. Uh, is there anything you do specifically before a competition mentally, um, or like how big is the mental game for you when you go into, let's say, regionals? Yeah. Which, by the way, regionals this last year, you smoked that thing. Oh. I was there. I was watching. That that was insane. The workout where you started on the rower, and then I was just like, <laughs> "What is going on?" Yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, the mental game is huge. I think that's a place where you can totally make or break you. And for me, especially in regionals where you have so much time to prepare and you know the events so far in advance, I do a lot of uh, visualization beforehand and just kind of putting myself in the right mental place, the right um, sort of place where I know I'm going to be at my best. Um, kind of just, you know... Visualizing, reminding yourself, you know, what, what you're doing, why you're doing it, and um, kind of going back to some of those times where you were, felt like you were really in the zone so you can try to get back there. All right, so here's the million-dollar question. Why are you doing it? <laughs> why am I doing it? Um, I think I actually wrote this down last year. I think that I've thought about it a lot. Like, what, what you know, what do you think your purpose is? Why do you think you're here? Um, and I think right now my working answer is that I think part of my purpose is to help people live more fulfilling lives and healthier lives. Um, whether that be through CrossFit, maybe I can inspire some people to live healthier or to exercise more or change their life in some way or through eventually through medicine in a more direct way, working one-on-one -on -one with people. Um, so it's all sort of working through, working towards those goals, helping people to maximize their potential. Awesome. 
That's cool. Yeah, most people, I mean, that's something I struggle with, too, trying to think what's what's my purpose, and that's, I'm sure we all do. Right. Um, but I think it's, you know, always kind of going back to that and trying to just think about it. And uh, you got to actually sit down sometimes and actually think about it to, right. to even get there. So you're not going to get there not thinking about it. Um, so it's a good practice to have in, something you can incorporate in your meditations, too. Always kind of be mindful of that. Um, so real quick, before I ask you the, the very last question, just a couple of things on the fly that I'm thinking about. You're doing the Open this year, right? Yes, I am. Are you excited? I'm very excited. It's coming up quickly. So, you know, after multiple years of doing the Open, what like what what's changed at this point? Like, you know, I mean, is, is it the same? Been, yeah, I think that this year is going to be different though, since there are so many changes to the format of the Open. So I have no idea what to expect, but I'm sure it'll be something different. Mm -hmm. Okay. And does your gym throw down? Do you do them by yourself? I usually do them, at least last year I did them all kind of by myself with a coach or with someone kind of talking me through it, maybe one or two people. Um, it's just easier that way now that you have to have all the video cameras and all that stuff. There's a lot of moving parts, so it's kind of hard to do with a lot of, a lot of people. Oh yeah, I, th I think I saw a couple videos last year where like somebody would walk by and stand in front of the camera like... Right. Ew. Yeah, I remember last time we talked was you called in when we were doing our open videos. With oh yeah. Other. So hopefully we'll have some more, rid <laughs> more ridiculous <laughs> open videos for everyone this year. Stay tuned. Um, Looking forward to that. Yeah, um, let's see. So, okay, last question and I'll let you go. Um, if we gave you a billion dollars to improve the world, how would you spend it? That's a really tough question. Um, I think, again, going back to the food topic, I think in some, in some way using that money to give everyone access to real food <laughs> so that it wasn't an issue, you know, that people, people could have real quality locally produced and grown food. Awesome. Um, have you ever looked into like doing uh, your own farming or anything like that? Um, not too much. <laughs> I did want to be a farmer when I was younger, but I had not oh, is that right? Maybe that's why yeah. you're heading this way. Usually, maybe <laughs> it's all together. All connected. Yeah. Uh, we 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 got to do an interview with a, a local farmer in Vermont, and uh, that was super cool to kind of see that side of things. And I know uh, Mike Bud so. Um, one of the hosts on Barbell Shrugged, he's, I don't know if I'm supposed to be giving away this secret or not, but he's always talking about in the future, our long-term goal will be to have a Barbell Shrugged farm oh, somewhere cool. where we just have like a huge farm. It's like a big compound. I was like, man, are we starting a cult? <laughs> like, we're just going to have to <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what's going on here, but, you know, who knows? One day we might have that. Um, cool. Uh, well, that is all I have. Um, so again, did this uh, because these are the questions Tim Ferriss asked his guests. I want to thank you for coming on. Do you have any shout outs you want to give, sponsors or w anything you're up, where can people find you, stuff like that? Yeah, sure. I'm on all the social media, Twitter and Instagram um, and Facebook and my website is juliefouché.com and I have amazing sponsors in um, Reebok, Rogue, Beyond the Whiteboard, which is great for tracking your workouts. Um, About Time makes great protein, Pure Pharma, um, oh, RX Mark here. Yeah, Pure Pharma, uh, Pure Pharma um, subscription. That's been super convenient oh. and awesome. Awesome. The, uh, you get all the supplements, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Yep, yep. Awesome. So convenient for people who don't know what I'm talking about. Like, they'll send you their all their supplements in one little packet that you can rip open. And if you're like me and you're on the road, this is the best thing ever because you yeah. just pack it in your suitcase. It's all right there. It makes it super convenient. Um, yeah. And, you know, like, like Tim Ferriss says, you, you put in the conditions and you set up the systems uh, for success. You know, that's that's yeah. that's the move. That's so, all. Um, yeah. I cut you off. What, what were your other sponsors? Um, I think I did, also didn't mention Fuel for Fire. Um, great little fuel packs for, I like them for in the middle of your workouts, um, and Paleo Power Meals makes great meals too. Awesome. 
Well, cool. Well, hey, I appreciate you jumping on with me for a second. Um, uh, maybe we could do this again. You were on episode 63 or something like that, a barbell shrug for people who haven't seen that one. Uh, we do most of the talking. You know, per usual, we interrupt our guests all the time, but we're getting better. Um, so hopefully we'll have you on again sometime, uh, maybe during the regionals or something. Uh, you going to the Arnold? Uh, I won't be at the Arnold this year, no, unfortunately. Mm, okay. Are you going to be in the area during that time or no? No, that's why I can't go. I'm going to be out of town. Okay. Well, never mind. Then We're going to see if fun. we can try to get Arnold on the show. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, thanks, yeah. Julie. Very cool. All right. Well, I'll see you next time. Sounds Bye. good. Thank you.